It's time for Cadillac on Call on News Radio 610 KONA. It's your chance to learn valuable health information right here in our community. Now, the host of Cadillac on Call, here's Jim Hall. And good Wednesday evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Cadillac on Call this mid January the 13th. And we, every Wednesday at this time from 6 to 7 p.m., we come your way and talk about a particular health or medical topic. And tonight, in the spirit of the new year, we're going to spend our hour helping you gain some valuable tools to help you, one, adhere to any New Year's resolutions that you uh, put before the new year started. And hopefully they're still intact. And two, hopefully the bottom line being they help you um, live a more healthy lifestyle as we move into the year twenty. 20- 16. So we're going to do that in just a minute. Again, uh, you probably heard it here just a few minutes ago on KONA with Ed Dawson and Rob Francis. Uh, just wanted to share with you that late this afternoon, uh, a statement from Cadillac Regional Medical Center saying that we are pleased to share that Cadillac and its represented nurses have reached tentative agreement on a new three-year contract. That agreement was reached this afternoon following a day of negotiations between the two sides. And the statement goes on to read, we're happy to have come together on a new contract And we look forward to working with our nurses to continue to provide the Tri-Cities area with the highest quality of care. And again, the Catholic statement goes on to say, we thank the members of our two negotiating teams for working together to get this agreement developed. So again, a tentative agreement has been reached between Catholic and its represented nurses. And uh, that's great news, certainly, uh, as we begin our program tonight. So let's get to the topic at hand. And that is the New Year's resolutions that... um, Hopefully you're still intact 13 days in, and with us tonight, two people that are very knowledgeable about helping me and my friends that work at Cadillac, and then the patients that they work with in the classes that they teach over at Cadillac Regional Medical Center. We have Kathy Piper and Becca Bender, both fitness specialists, and Kathy also oversees the employee wellness, so really she makes sure that I stay healthy throughout the year, and the other 3,000 of us uh, that work at Catholic Regional Medical Center. And, and Kathy, that's a that's a busy day, busy job for you, if uh, that employee side alone, right? Oh, goodness, yes. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot of employees, and that's a lot of New Year's resolutions to get started on, too. Well, I was going to say for both of you, thanks for taking the time to be with us tonight, uh, because certainly I think um, it was funny before the New Year started. I think we were in, in advance of Thanksgiving. Uh, we had some folks, I think, and. Uh, the nutrition counselors were here to talk about, uh, you know, healthy eating during the holidays and all that fun stuff. And and I and I remember, I think they were talking about. We touched on New Year's resolutions that, you know, one of the things is people, you know, they they start so fast with them, but gosh, you know, January may not pass, and they may be have fallen aside. Do you find that's true in in what you see with your patients? Oh, definitely. And, uh, you know, there at Cadillac, we try to start our New Year's resolutions a little bit early as we start in uh, early Thanksgiving time with a uh, weight smackdown that we do. We call it the stuffing smackdown (laughs) that we encourage the employees to keep within plus or minus two pounds throughout the holidays. And we have weekly weigh-ins and uh, prizes that we give the employees, but we really try to encourage them to start the new year off right and and maintain that weight throughout the holidays because the weight that you gain during the holidays just seems so much harder to get off once January hits. Becca, now in your patients and the classes that you teach, both patients and uh, those involving uh, hospitalized patients or at least that come to the health plex with you, do you find that they have these resolutions and they're they have a pretty good attitude toward them or you just see does it run the spectrum that some are very committed and adhere to them and some are just oh i'm two weeks in and to heck with it most of my classes people have been coming for years and years even more i started teaching and we don't focus on goals or new year's resolutions just coming to exercise class and you see you have those that come all the time die hard in there two days a week, every week, and then you have those that come and go, but that's kind of the same with New Year's resolutions. You have those that keep to it strictly, and then you have those that are there, and then they fall off the wagon and are kind of in and out, Mm -hmm. not really sure if they want to be there or not, and so that's the hard part with the goals and the resolutions is actually keeping them. I was going to say, uh, for those of you that don't know, Kathy and Becca work at the Catholic Health Plex, and and it's a wonderful facility. We've featured it many times on this program. If you haven't been by there, just walk in there some weekday and walk around and see. There's a lot of activity there, but there are also a lot of classes that are provided and taught there by Kathy, Becca, and other folks at Cadillac on topics ranging from all kinds of things. Of the fit, And we're going to touch on some of them tonight. 
Uh, but there are definitely ways for you uh, in, in different kinds that I guess could meet you where you are. Uh, and the number to call is 942-2660. Is that right? Correct. If you want to yeah. go and, and find out about the classes. And we'll touch on some of them. But also just put org, And I think there's a button on the website that says register for a class. And you can go online and look and see all of the different offerings. But but Kathy, is that the idea with, with why the, the variation that you want to provide a variety so that people, whether wherever they're at in their health or their fitness, uh, they can get help. Right. And, and when you look at the list that everybody provides for you, especially the government tracks, you know, all kinds of information. But the top five lists that people want to do every New Year's resolution, everyone wants to lose weight. Um, you want to quit smoking. You want to get more education, uh, volunteer to help others. And, and you want to acquire a better job. Those are kind of the standard, you know, New Year's resolutions that uh, everybody seems to put down. But then once you write them down, then we got to find a way to help help you manage that. And and we offer a lot of opportunities for the community and the staff to come in and get help in whatever area that they're looking for help in. And those that top five list, you just rattled those off. Maybe let's touch on a few of those. What you know, maybe begin with that that weight loss. What's so, what's the key one? So if you're starting your New Year's resolution, you always want to make a specific goal and, and it's got to be an attainable goal and you need to write it down. Um, for example, to lose 25 pounds by June 15th, 2016. That's your goal. And then you want to create a game plan of how you're going to do it. For example, you want to complete four workouts at the gym per week and maybe increase to five in February and six in March or however it is. You want to make sure you write down what your game plan is going to be and, and how you're going to accomplish it. And you also want to write down why you want to meet your goals. What's so important about losing that 25 pounds? Is it to increase uh, your energy level throughout the day or decrease your blood pressure? You want to make sure that you're doing your resolutions for a specific reason. Is that just for accountability? It is. It's definitely accountability. And another portion of the accountability is that you want to share your goals with others. Um, You've got social media that's showing people losing weight or quitting smoking or running a marathon or whatever it is they're going to do. You know, I used to encourage all of our athletes to write a big poster and put it on their wall so they see it every single night. I want to do A, B, or C so that you see that goal and visualizing your goal is a real important um, aspect. And then, of course, life happens. You know, what happens when, oh, I got sick and I couldn't get to the gym this week? You know, how are you going to handle that setback and when are you going to jump back on the bandwagon? All right, Becca. So in my case, I just had a birthday. I had a few extra pieces of cake and cookies. Is that okay to go off the wagon but get right back on? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Calories in and calories out. So you eat those extra cookies or cake for your birthday. You go... And a little extra time on the treadmill or however you're exercising, you make up for it. <laughs> but is the key point, though, that it, you know, obviously you're, you're and, I, and knowing both of you, you want to make it fun and, and make it enjoyable that it's not going to be something that's going to, you know, just mm-hmm. be be so drudgery. Yeah. Well, and you want to have good motivation, you know, drag a friend along to the diet center when you want to start or, um, you know, to the gym, somebody that you're going to help make you accountable. You know, Becca's going to make me walk every day at lunchtime, you know, and then you want to have a reward. How are you going to reward yourself? Something small for accomplishing your goals. That's a really big component of it um, in helping you keep your goal attainable is that you reward yourself. I have to ask you a quick question before we go to break on the employee side of the the people that work at Cadillac, you know, obviously they work in healthcare. Are they healthier people? Do they take their own advice? Do you find? Wow, or some do, some don't. I don't want to put you on I just say that I'm guessing that most of them do, but I, but you probably see the same types of attitudes that you do among your patients. You do. I think, mm-hmm. I think you see it both ways. You have some that are just strictly overachievers, and you have some who have other very important things going on in their life, and it might not be at the top of their list. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think deep down everybody wants to be healthy and happy, and um, then that's what we're here to help them accomplish. But I know in your case, and certainly obviously we all know that, that health care and pe- the cost of health care, and, and certainly from an employer, standpoint, you know, 
of anybody that wants to have healthy employees, it's a health care facility. It's a health care facility, and we really strive on giving a lot of different programs and reaching a variety of staff. We have knitting classes. We have crochet knitting classes. Knitting classes? Wait a minute. We have Tai Chi. Does that make your hand? I guess for people. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, there's just a right. lot of different um, classes uh, that we provide that reaches a lot of different people, and we also have shift workers. We have people that work at night and days and evenings, and you got to make your classes available so that people can get to them and and feel valued by the the company. Well, and I was going to say for somebody, I used to work in, uh, like a swing shift type of schedule, and and I imagine the people that have to work overnight, it's all you know. Again, that for that segment of the population, you know, they may be used to working overnights, but again, it's probably a little bit different approach than someone that works an eight to five type schedule. Oh, definitely, they still have to find a way to exercise. You know, their their daytime exercising is when the rest of us are at work. Um, so maybe when they get off at seven o'clock in the morning, then they're going to the gym um, or something like that. That's Kathy Piper. She's a fitness specialist at Cadillac Regional Medical Center. She's joined tonight by, uh, by Becca Bender, another fitness specialist. And uh, we're all getting fit, uh, both here in the studio and hopefully you at home already have some tips that can help you live a, live a healthier 2016. In the remaining time of our program, we're, we're going to go focus on some more great tips that we can all adhere to as we move forward this year and also share some of the classes. Uh, they've touched on Kathy and Becca, some of the classes already, but there's a really neat assortment that is available to the community that you might not be realizing is there, and it's a great opportunity for you to uh, maybe stick, what is it, tip your toe into the water and start sample because they're really fun classes, and, and it's one of those where that I need. You know, you're exercising. You don't even realize it. We have to take our first break of the evening. Uh, you're listening to Cadillac on Call. Back with more in just a minute. You're listening to Cadillac on Call on 610 KONA. This program is not a substitute for direct consultation with your own health care provider. Always consult your health care provider for your specific condition, especially if you have or suspect you may have a medical problem. Now back to Cadillac on Call. Here again, Jim Hall. <laughs> and continuing our New Year's resolution, Healthier Living with Kathy Piper and Becca Bender. And Kathy, let's, uh, you brought all kinds of top 50 lists and top 10 lists. We've already touched on a top five list. But let's spend this, qu- uh, this quarter hour talking about nutrition and the importance of eating, right? Because we touched on it a little bit. It seems like we all forget about what's the right amount to eat. But of this top 10 um, nutrition tips that you have, maybe what, what's number one in your mind? You know, I think the thing that sticks out most to me when I'm working with employees and staff is is that you have to enjoy your food, but we need to eat less. We tend to overeat a lot at mealtime, regardless of when meal it is, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and that we just need to, you know, get to know the foods that you're going to eat and, and really what's in them and not eat as much. Well, and, and I would think, too, and you see this all the time, now everybody says read these food labels, but... You know, because even some of the packaging, the way they package foods now, it'll say reduced fat or reduced sugar or things like that, that, you know, kind of grab your eye. But if you turn it around and what is the rule of thumb on, say, maybe a sugar drink or something like that or the the amount of salts and those kinds of, what should people really be looking for when they look at those labels? When you look at a food label, first read at the top, it'll say serving size. You might have a can of soup. Serving size is four, so everything they put on there is just one serving. So that's you four eat, people. That yeah, doesn't mean you people. have four servings, four servings for one person. Yeah. Right? So if you eat <laughs> yeah. the whole can, right. you got to multiply everything on that can by four. Okay. And you also want to touch saturated fat. You want to keep that low. Cholesterol low. Sugars keep those low too. Those are the important things. And then just read. And, and if you're like me, you get confused all the time because yeah. every package is different and it's labeled different. As as much as they try to standardize the packaging, it's really not standardized enough for the general population to look at. And in the days of, sn- of smartphones, I love the app CalorieKing.com. If you go out to CalorieKing.com, it tells you everything you want to know about a roast beef sandwich at Arby's. Or it will tell you how many calories are in a can of corned beef hash. Or whatever it is you might be eating, mm. you can look it up on CalorieKing.com and it tells you everything that's in that food. And then the other one that I like to look at is Super Tracker. 
uh, at USDA.gov. And they really keep a pretty good handle on the food that is uh, served in the United States and and abroad, too. They've got a lot of international foods on there, but it gives you a lot of the uh, choices. It helps you to make better choices with the food that you're picking out when you see that that sodium is about 10 times too much in that can of corned beef hash that you're going to eat than you need in a whole week. So was, it helps you to make better choices. I was looking at your top 10 list. There was one that just really jumped out at me. And it was take your time. Yeah. How many of us eat in the car every day (laughs) or how many of us eat at our desk? And I'm totally guilty of that a lot of days. Um, (laughs) But you really do have to be mindful um, to eat slowly and enjoy the taste and the textures and, and kind of pay attention to how you're feeling while you're eating. Um, you can use hunger and fullness cues to recognize when you should eat and, and really when you've had enough. So that means it's, you know, to, to, it, and plus it, it's probably more enjoyable, isn't it? I mean, especially if you're you're with, you know, a spouse or, or your kids or something like that. It's it maybe that might be the only time of the day, say it's dinner time, that you're all together at the table. And take the time to have family conversation or plan your next family meal the next night, what everybody wants to have. Um, for the for future meals, it, it's a good time for conversation. Mm-hmm. Here's another good one, Becca. Use a smaller plate. That's that's deceiving, <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. I like that. There's all these good little tips. Yeah, I mean, they even have special plates that are portioned in the three sizes, where you can use that big side for your fruits and vegetables, so you get mm-hmm. half your plate of fruits and vegetables. And then you could put your meat and your bread in one portion. That way. Those are supposed to be smaller, but in a nutshell, we get away with eating these huge sides of meat. And then we have this little portion size of vegetables on the side. And so just switching it around and making that bigger portion vegetables and then those little small portions, that helps to portion out your meals, too. I want to spend a little time on an age group, the kids, because certainly, uh, you know, we, we've touched on this fast pace that, that we all live in. And and we know the the, the growing problem of uh, childhood obesity and the way our kids eat and obviously their habits aren't uh, as good as they probably should be or we wouldn't have this problem right no and really one of the when looking at teenagers and some children one of their top new year's resolutions and yes kids do make a lot of new year's resolutions is to exercise more and become physically fit that's the number one new year's resolution that teenagers oh, like really? to make mm-hmm. um, and saying no to fast foods that's another one. And soda. A lot of teenagers try to make their New, New Year's resolution to cut those out of their diet. Um, and okay, then what now, are the alternatives? And if nowadays, I don't drink Coke or Pepsi, what, what should I be doing? Well, you know, nowadays there's water. There are smoothies and some other. Jamba Juice has a lot of great, you know, opportunities for beverages that kids like to go, which uh-huh. we now have one in the Tri-Cities. Um, and believe it or not, roadside trucks. Do you know at lunchtime those roadside trucks are just packed with teenagers and kids trying to get a quick lunch? Mm -hmm. Um, And adults, too, you know, trying to get something to eat because they didn't take the time to pack to pack their lunch. Um, And and really, in looking at the obesity of kids, we have turned our treats that used to be really the word treatment. It was a treat, meaning once a a every couple week kind of thing to bribing our kids um, for treats every night. Okay, if you get your homework done, honey, you can have a bowl of ice cream. Well, bowls of ice cream used to be a once every other week treat versus an every night treat. Um, and we tend to bribe kids with food more so than we used to in uh, years gone by. Bribe them with you get to go run a mile, yeah. something like that. Yeah, you know, get take them to the pool. <laughs> if you finish your homework, we have time to go to the gym tonight. Oh, there you go. You know, finish your homework, we can go walk the dog. Um, that kind of thing and make family exercise, you know, when you're when you're done with your homework in the springtime, we'll go out and work in the garden. You know, there's lots of other ways we could get around using food as a reward and using family time and family activities as the reward. Interesting. And, and you know, and obviously, too, with the especially the last couple of weeks, I actually saw the sun peek out a couple of times today, which was nice. But even that, you know, it's been dreary around here and it can, you know, it gets that way when that inversion sets in and and that can probably affect things too, right? Your mental approach. Yeah, it also leads to, you know, eating more, eating at home. You're sitting in front of the TV watching, having more screen time at night because it is dark out or it's raining or it's snowing or it's icing outside. And you just tend to eat when you're doing those things. And it's not like 
uh, meaningful eating. It's just snacking. And we are a country of snack food right now. So uh, where are you at 13 days? Uh, tell me about the next big class you have, Becca, that you're, you're teaching, that you're excited for, uh, that, that you offer over at the Cadillac Health Plex. Well, tomorrow I start my day off at 9 a.m. teaching my first class, the Strength Stretch and Renew, which is kind of like a sit and be fit class. Really? Mm-hmm. And that's we, available, I mean... For you, anyone who wants to come in. So they yeah. could just show up tomorrow? Yep. and test it out. You don't have to pay the fee to test the class out. You can just come in, see if you like it. And then if you do, there's a $25 punch card you can buy at our registration oh, desk. Really? And you can use that for all the community wellness classes, and there's four options for that. So tomorrow, your 9 o'clock class, what do you go over? Is it like an hour or so that you spend? Yeah. Uh, you spend what- an hour, you start, you kind of warm up. We have an aerobic portion. You do dumbbells. You, we use resistance bands. We use a variety of different equipment. We work on balance. We work on flexibility. And how important is is you know this? You're touching on flexibility. Obviously, the older you get, but but flexibility and just stretching mm-hmm. and making sure that you stretch out before you exercise or even as exercise. Mm-hmm. It's very important to warm up, especially in the winter time, because you need to get the muscles loose and warm to prevent injury. Mm-hmm. And then it also helps with stretching afterwards, keep your flexibility. It helps your range of motion. As you get older, you start to lose some of those functionality mm-hmm. that you have when you're young. Your muscles start to get tight. And you never want to lose that... Um, uh, what am I looking for, the word? You always want to be able to at least get up out of your chair. So always know what your limitations Mm -hmm. are? No, not know your limitations, but use it or lose it almost. Uh So just keep moving no matter what you do. Even if you're just sitting there walking around the house, commercial comes on TV, or just walk around the kitchen, walk around the couch. Mm -hmm. And know, I guess, know your place and know where you are in your fitness life. Yes, you definitely want to know your limitations to the point as a fall risk. You don't want to push yourself too much. If you're unsteady, definitely walk around with... Assistive, uh, assistive devices uh-huh. <laughs> or use a counter, some kind of surface that's not going to move out of your way. Uh-huh. That way you don't. And if you need help, don't step up on those steps to get up into the, don't keep things high up in the shelves. So you have to risk falling off your chair or reaching too high. Keep it low. So that class is tomorrow at nine and that's just something they that's could. That's just one, yeah. So they, if they're really gung-ho as they're listening tonight going, I'm going to jump on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can just show up and They participate. can show up, and there's awesome. an open chair for them. And you said there's a – tell me about this little punch card thing. We have just a m- quick minute, Kathy, on how that works. Well, when they come in to the HealthPlex, they, they'll purchase a punch card for $25, and they can come to any of the classes, and they just punch oh, okay. it. Okay. So it just works no matter what, mm-hmm. and they can, they can sample if they want to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. We're visiting with Kathy Piper, who is a fitness specialist at Cadillac Regional Medical Center. She works with patients at the Cadillac HealthPlex, also works with 3,200 employee patients who are clients of hers, uh, and making sure that the, the nurses, the doctors, and all of the other folks that work at Cadillac, are, they are as fit as they need to be, uh, especially as they go about their um, important business throughout the day. And Becca Bender, who also works with Kathy at the HealthPlex, and we've learned about these wonderful classes that, that are offered. And, again, two ways that you can go learn more about them. The number to call if you want to register and learn more is 942-2660, 942-2660. Or you can visit the Cadillac website, cadillac.org. And there's a whole uh, nice laundry list of classes that are offering. And you can take uh, pick yours and find out a little bit about each of the classes that are offered. The name of the program is Cadillac on Call. We are back with the second half of our program right after this. You're listening to Cadillac On Call on 610 KONA. This program provides general information only. Any comments or information presented are strictly for educational purposes. Cadillac and 610 KONA do not endorse any of the suggestions made by the presenter or callers. Now back to Cadillac On Call. Once again, Jim Hall. And don't you just feel healthier if you listen to that first sixty minute or first thirty minutes of our sixty minute program? Um, I do. I've learned a lot already. Uh, we have Kathy Piper and Becca Bender, fitness specialists at Catholic Regional Medical Center, and they are part of the educational health team that teaches a variety of classes over at Catholic to both employees and to you, the public. And as Becca mentioned, she's going to be teaching a class 
uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow that you're more than welcome to come and attend. And it has to do with uh, you can learn how to stretch and exercise and, and strengthen and renew your body. And you can just come and sample it if you don't want to uh, uh, find that it's not for you. But uh, that's just part of your day, right, Becca? You have a couple other classes that you yes, teach. Yes, I have two more classes right after that. I have a class that goes from 1015 to 1115. It's called Better Bones and Balance. And we gear that class towards women with osteoporosis or osteopenia. And they either want to prevent or reverse the bone loss and it's a floor aerobics class moderate impact we focus almost on the same components because they're all very important no matter what level you're working at you start with a warm-up you have your aerobics portion and then we use a we get on the floor in that class use mats we use the therabands we use wall work we sit in the chair and do abs everything and, and is that something obviously for folks that that are impacted by uh you know, issues with their bones, um, and you touched on it, I think, earlier in the program, is is the, the risk of falls. Um, so does this also help, you know, folks at, at that, at, that are at, at risk that take that class, it also helps them as they move forward to, mm-hmm. I guess, reduce their fall risk? Yes, in all classes, we uh, at least once a week or once every other week, I focus on balance. Mm-hmm. And that's very important to help prevent falls because you're strengthening your core muscles. You're learning how your body reacts to certain positions mm-hmm. you and your stability. And so that way you can be more safe. But just working on it mm-hmm. helps any little. Mm-hmm. And so that's the Better Bones and Balance bones. class. Mm-hmm. And then you also do a really important class uh, with breast cancer survivors. Tell us about that yes, one. Yes, I have a breast cancer survivor class. And that one goes from 1130 to 1230. And I would even welcome if you are a current breast cancer patient right now just coming in the class and talking to the ladies because just from what I've learned with them, it's really important to have people who have gone through the same thing as you to talk to because they say it's really hard. You have to put on this strong face for people and you really can't talk about what's going on unless someone knows what you're going through. And so they almost use it as a little exercise support group and we focus on areas that they have difficulty in, upper body and chest from different procedures, their balance from the chemo, Mm -hmm. aerobics, getting that aerobics back up because you get really weak as you're going through all these different procedures and treatments. And then they just have fun, get to loosen up and talk to people who know what they've gone through. Kathy Piper, you you said there's some other, you know, we don't have time to get to every single class, but it maybe is a nice segue as some of the the chronic disease, chronic conditions classes that are offered as well. Yes, Catholic started uh, last year teaching a group of classes called Living Well with Chronic Conditions. And these are workshops that were developed at Stanford University, and they have become the proven leader in self-management classes for people with chronic health health conditions. And starting January 25th from 1.30 to 4 o'clock, our next Living Well with Chronic t- Conditions class will be beginning. And this class, you know, as we talked a little bit earlier about creating goals and things uh, for your New Year's resolution, this kind of helps people with chronic conditions organize their lives because sometimes it's filled with a lot of doctor's appointments. They are very fatigued. They've got pain. Um, They're not sure how to handle the stress or how to relax. They take a lot of medications and maybe they need assistance using their medications effectively. They teach them how to solve problems and meet your personal goals um, tr- make, help them make choices about their treatment and also to eat well so that they can live well. And, and this class is about a six week class. It is absolutely free to the public. Hmm. And I'll repeat that. It is absolutely free to the public to sign up for the class living well with chronic conditions. And, you know, the, really the goal is to imagine how it would feel to take control of your health, especially when you're battling a lot of chronic conditions. And is that also, Available, I would think, in that class where a spouse brings their, you know, their loved one to just Mm -hmm. to, because probably they're bringing them to attend the class. Right, and it could be a caregiver. Right. You know, it could be a A a, a support. It could be a daughter who's caring for their mother or anything like that. Yes, it meets once a week um, from one thirty to 4 there at the HealthPlex. And, again, you can go out to org to register 
uh, for the class, or you can call the 942-2660, and they can direct you to the right place to get registered for that class. A question for both of you on a topic you've kind of touched on a little bit, but I want to get a little more into it, and that is the the mental approach to all this, you know, whether it's a it's a chronic condition or it's a breast cancer patient that's someone right in the midst of it, you know, having that, that po- one, a positive mental approach, but having a nice support system, as you touched on, has to be helpful. It does, yeah. I think it makes you more successful as well because if you have someone going through it with you or holding you accountable, making it fun, so you don't focus so much on what's wrong with you, you focus what you're doing at that moment. And is it is it also with the with the the patients and especially I'm guessing the survivor the breast cancer survivors that that they have to give themselves permission just to go and just enjoy and just help them it's it probably is just a release for them that they're in a room with people who are in exactly the same position and you know they can kind of I guess leave their their worries behind, if you will, but I mean, that just kind of their inhibitions, too. Oh, yeah, just share their thoughts or their fears or just let loose and laugh. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's hard, too, because we get so, we're chatty in that class and we're having fun and you're trying to instruct <laughs> exercise at the oh, that's same right. time. that's right, we got some exercises and, to do. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you feel like you're interrupting their sure. little hour, but then they know it's all, they're there for exercise, too. But no, they it really helps to have people to talk to and confide in and on your journey. Kathy, there was another class you were going to share with yes, us similar it's, it's to the It's on one. the similar with the Living Well um, for Chronic Conditions, and it's the Living Well with Chronic Pain. And there is quite uh, the group of people that have a lot of pain issues in our community. And this specific class is another workshop that is designed to help people who have chronic pain with the hopes of improving the quality of their life. And it goes through information and gives them practical tools to help the individuals develop a really good self-management skill that they can create to cope with their symptoms a little bit better and the challenges that they experience day by day. And do you find with your with your the clients or your patients or whoever you're working with, the people in your classes, is it that that they get mentally healthier and that you know, of just the knowledge that they gain about living healthier? I, I would think so. And, and the fact that they can go out and be and share that with the rest of their family or the rest of their neighbors or, you know, when you're feeling good, other people are going to feel good. When you feel bad, those around you feel bad. It kind of tends mm-hmm. to go that way sometimes. And so, you know, our goal is is to make, uh, especially for employees, you know, ha- healthy employees or happy employees. Sure. Well, and also in, in just that whole, and it goes right to your stretching class, Becca, that <laughs> I know one of my things when I exercise is, you know, I'm sore and it's like, okay, what's a healthy sore? It's okay. You want to be sore, right? And that shows that you're working. <laughs> to a point, yes. You want to <laughs> you don't want to drop on the floor right. so you can't walk anymore. But it means you worked hard and it means you gain that strength. And eventually it's going to, once the pain goes away, you're going to be that much stronger. We're visiting with Becca Bender and Kathy Piper from Cadillac Regional Medical Center. They work in the Cadillac Healthplex, where there is a whole laundry list of classes that are offered that you can take advantage of, fitness-related, yoga. They have pediatric yoga that is also available for young children. And there are all kinds of uh, interesting classes, worthwhile classes, that can make uh, you and your loved ones uh, healthier as we enter into 2016 and, and hopefully work our way through adhering to these resolutions beyond June, July, August, let alone January, February, or March. We have to take our final break of the evening. We will be back with our remaining minutes of Cadillac on Call in just a minute. You're listening to Cadillac on Call on 610 KONA. This program is not a substitute for direct consultation with your own health care provider. Always consult your health care provider for your specific condition, especially if you have or suspect you may have a medical problem. Now back to Cadillac on Call. Here again, Jim Hall. And continuing our path toward a healthy 2016, the theme of our program is making those New Year's resolutions last into February, March, April, May, June, July, and heck, who knows, maybe all the way through the year so that it, they're not resolutions, they're just a way of life. And uh, Kathy Piper and Becca Bender, fitness specialists at Catholic Regional Medical Center are with me tonight. And 
sharing some great information, some wonderful classes that are available. I didn't realize the, the scope of the classes that are available to community residents that can come in no matter what their fitness level and what their age. And it's been a real uh, eye-opener for me. And if you want to just go and see, go to Catholic.org and uh, find a class. I think you can you can actually just search classes, and it'll take you to the list of classes that are available for community members to uh, to help them live a healthier lifestyle. And before we let you guys go, I want to touch on two things. Um, we've covered a lot of information here, but here's just sitting here for this uh, 45 minutes that we've been on the air so far. You guys like what you do, I can tell. Becca, is that why you do it, is uh, the successes that you see, no matter how small or how big? Yes, it's wonderful to see someone come in in one state, and then as they progress and get better, and you can see that physical change, it makes you feel good because you were a part of that. I think that's in any aspect. Kathy, with her employees, she gets to see their progress, and just seeing that you were a part of someone's change, it's a good reward. Kathy, the same. What, what about you? Oh, definitely. And just hearing the response that we get from the employees, that they, they like the classes and the wide variety of offerings, and they're so excited that they can participate because I've lost 100 pounds or that they've quit smoking or they have quit and given up uh, Coke products or, you know, whatever their little life struggle might be, their stress levels reduced. They learn to knit. They learn to crochet. You know, we Is offer... that what the reason behind the knitting classes and the crochet? classes I, I that was on my next list you know we have a lot of employees who just need, maybe are arth- arthritic and so um, the knitting was a way to help get the fingers and joints okay. moving it's a stress relief it gives you a hobby to do you know besides watching television perhaps maybe you'd like to learn to knit or crochet but we had a lot of interest from employees asking for just a variety of different things uh, we're getting ready to start a Tai Chi class next week for the employees. We've had a lot of requests for Tai Chi for the staff. You know, we've done yoga. We've um, done pound. We've done so many different pound. classes. A uh, pound is a drumming stick, uh, using drumsticks to music. And um, Lisa Price, our boss, has taught that class and is a great class, and the employees loved it. So, you know, we just try to offer a, a wide drumming variety. drumming stick. So do you run around and play the drums? <laughs> you pound on the on floor. The oh, okay. Yeah, on a mat. Excuse me, in front of you. We don't want to pound on our beautiful new floors. But we will pound on the mats in front of us. And, you know, we try to keep the employees engaged in healthy mm-hmm. uh, lifestyle activities by offering a wide variety of things and, and getting the feedback from them on how much they enjoy that. Um, it gives you a sense of good feeling that they're going to be healthy. And because we take care of a lot of very sick people. Sure. And, and you know, and I would imagine for the employees, there's, it's a, it's a, a nice relief or it's a nice, I hate to use the word diversion, but it's something to get them away from. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I sit here and I get a, the great fortune of interviewing people like you and nurses and doctors that take care of people. Sometimes they die and some, or, you know, they're very sick and they're, you know, the outcome isn't going to be an optimum one all the time. And it's it's a, is it a way, especially for the employee, the, the colleagues that we work with, it's a way for them to help, I guess, do their jobs every day? It's a way to keep them mentally and physically strong. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It gives them a, a release and something to do so they're not focusing on the negative and bring them back to the positive. Sure. Well, we've got just a couple of minutes left, and I want to. I always like to save a, a few minutes at the end of our programs to allow our guests to maybe just... Let's uh, summarize the high points, uh, the executive summary, if you will, that, um, but maybe just uh, if you, take a minute or two, each of you, to just summarize uh, the key points that you want, some of our, you want our listeners at home uh, to take away tonight that maybe uh, that'll help them wake up tomorrow and, and renew their commitment to, to be healthier in 2016. Start with you, Kath. Well, everybody has their own agenda. And so you want to pick something that is important to you. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, a new resolution, but a better resolution that you want to make something better in 2016. And no matter how big or how small you want to go, just go. Just dip that toe in the water, if you will, and, yep. and it'll be it'll probably be amazing of where they might be in yep. six months. From you might time. not think you can swim to the edge of the pool, but you might be swimming a mile very <laughs> shortly. And Becca, from your view, I would say I would just like everyone to remember as they're going through these changes and their goals and their New Year's resolutions, just remember that 
baby steps and to pride yourself on the small things. You might have want to lose 25 pounds, but you only lost one pound so far. You just have to keep going because things take time. Go slow and just reward yourself on those small successes that you have. You were drinking five sodas a week. Now you're down to three. Just keep going. And also, uh, just know that uh, it's kind of, and it sounds kind of trite a little bit, but you know, make the most of each day. It's like, my gosh, it's it's you know, you kind of take don't take things for granted in your life. No, no, I'm, no. Just treat each day as a new day. Awesome, and, g- and give me those uh, the contact numbers and where people can go to l- to learn about these classes again. If they have any questions about any classes we've talked about tonight, they can call nine four two. 2660 and the operators will get you to the right place where you need to go. And you can also visit the Catholic website. There's everything from, you've heard it tonight, Tai Chi, Better Bones and Balance. There are classes on pediatric yoga for the kids. And and interestingly, and we've touched on this about the Catholic Health Plex, you go in there on any weekday and you'll see people from age infant to probably in their 90s. And Many times, uh, most of them, when they walk out, it's amazing. You'll see a smile on their face, honestly. Kathy and Becca, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, happy 2016, <laughs> and uh, thanks for all the great work that both of you do thank on you. behalf of our community and help making us all live healthier lives. That's all the time we have for this edition of Catholic On Call. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Wednesday evening. Good night. <laughs>